Hey guys, in the last video we shared how to tile the pebble stone shower floor in a most recent project. Today we're going to share tips on how to tile the shower wall, specifically the main shower wall using vertical 12 by 24s. We're going to give you tips on the tools that we use, how we cut into the shower niche, and also how we cut into the corner shower bench. A lot of really great tips are in today's video. Before we get started, this is our setup in the shower. We have everything in there, the tools, the materials, the tile, and we're protecting the shower pan floor, which is important. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start this back wall first. I always recommend using, uh, tiling the back wall so that when you cut your tile, that the tile coming into the back wall kind of hides that grout joint rather than doing a side wall and seeing the grout joint right as you look at the back of the wall. And what we're going to do, it's going to be a fairly simple layout. Since this tile is so busy, I think we're just going to go with it. It's a 12 by 24. We're going to stack them vertically and we're going to make it easy on ourselves. Since this is so busy, we're not going to have any accents at all. So it's just going to be the 12 by 24. So that makes things a little bit easier. So what I did here is that we have 59 inches because we had a 60 inch bathroom. So we have 59 inches here. So when you figure out your middle here, it's 29 and a half. And what I've decided to do is just split a tile in half through that middle there. So you got seven, seven, eight. So I put my laser on the right side of it. So that'll basically give us about 11 inch piece on either side. So it's gonna look like pretty full tile all the way around. So we're gonna be staggering the pattern in thirds. We have a 94 inch tall ceiling. So I'm just going to start out with a full tile. 94 inches. Yeah, that'll leave like a 10 and a half inch piece. So if we start out with a full tile, we'll be all right on that. So we already have our flat pebble down against the floor. So we'll just get started here. And we're going to use our Yora notch trial. Uh, this is for the larger format tile. For this project, we're using Schluter's All Set. This is their thin set mortar. And what that does is maintain the warranty for the Schluter shower system. So it's always important to keep that in consideration. Now, as you see here, Steve is using the Euro notch trowel and all of the trowel ridges are facing the same direction. This is called directional troweling and is a very important principle when setting tile. You want to back butter, but I honestly on the walls, I guess I've just been used to it, doing it for years, but I always back trial on the wall. To me, it just gives a little bit more flexibility on lippage and things. It's just some kind of something I've been accustomed to doing. But you can just back butter and leave it like that as well, like you do a floor. I just do, do like the extra thickness. Always have a nice sponge handy, and as you can, as you saw there, Steve removed the excess thin set from the edge of the tile because we're going to be using these clips for the T-lock system, and that will help prevent the thin set mortar from collecting along the edge of the clip. So just start that first row, go all the way up to the ceiling, follow your laser line, and then from there you can just reference yourself off of that tile. As we go up the wall, we're continuing with our directional troweling. The reason why that's so important and for back troweling the tile is you get really good coverage on the back of the tile. For a wet area, you want 95 to 100% coverage of thin set mortar on the back of the tile. Face these wedges down. We're using the pliers to compress the wedges into the clips and checking that all of our tiles line up with the laser level. And then we're adding the clips again to the top of this tile and continuing with the application of the thin set to the wall and the back of the tile. The reason for the directional troweling is when you compress the tile into the thin set, you're removing any of the air gaps behind the tile and getting your 95 to 100% coverage. So we're just continuing up the wall. For this, we're getting a measurement on the left and the right side of the tile, as your drywall could be uneven at the ceiling, and we're making the cut with the wet saw. So if you need to make any kind of like a tapered cut, using the wet saw is great. You can also use a, a tile cutter for that. So for example, the Ishi or the Montelite Master Piuma. So we're leaving a 1 16th to 1 8th, 8th inch gap at the ceiling, and Steve will mention that here briefly. So in this top ceiling joint, I'd say if you Keep yourself within an eighth inch from the ceiling. You'll be able to get a nice caulk joint against the ceiling. I definitely recommend using a silicone against the ceiling because this drywall 
heating expansion and everything. Well, you know, if you put grout here, it's always going to crack. So, you know, give yourself a little bit of space, like a 16th of an inch to an eighth inch. And then you'll be able to get a nice caulking joint against there. And just line your whole wall up with your, with your laser. And then we'll be able to go off from there. And basically what I'm just looking here is against my pebble stone and making sure that I can get an, you know, my even grout joint and stay level with this. So if this was a little cockeyed, I might have to scribe cut my tile, but this looks pretty good here. And also whenever you're setting the tile, the first tile up against the shower floor, it's good to leave at least a 1 16th to 1 8th inch gap. Every once in a while, it's not a bad idea to just pull this off and see what kind of coverage you're getting. So you can see that this is all really well bonded to that wall. That's a good idea. And that's where, when you trial this back side and trial this side on a wall, I, it seems like you definitely get some pretty good coverage there. So, then we put the clips in. Since this is our straight wall here, you wanna, you wanna be pushing your wedges into the, into the side that's already level so that you're not pushing your if you put it this way, you'll end up pushing the tile that way a little bit. So, and I'll keep the laser on here too, just to make sure this doesn't move when you're doing any of that. And it's a good idea to always just wipe that, that joint before putting these clips down, because you don't want to have thin set up against the side of the clip. When you have thin set here, it ends up kind of, when you go to break this off, you end up getting this part stuck in, in the grout joint. You have to use a tilling knife to kind of get it out. So, if you wipe that excess. So I usually do three clips per side on a 24 inch piece and then for 12 inches every two pieces. I'm just moving this clip up more towards the edge so you want to just kind of clean out the joint. So notice how we're going up the wall and this second tile in the second column is offset by one third. So for example if you have 12 by 24 inch tiles and as you can see, we're going up the wall. We have our full tile there. The, the tiles are offset by one third of a tile, so about eight inches in this case. So this tile was eight inches below. The top of this tile is eight inches below the tile to the right of it. And this is maintaining our one third offset pattern, which helps out with tile lippage. So just to show you on this gun, uh, this adjusts like how far you can push that wedge in. I usually kind of like to have mine all the way out because uh, these straps are super strong so you can put as much tension as you can possibly put on these things and they're not going to break so you know that's one different thing with a lot of the ones that look like this um, this system I mean these strip these straps are super strong so just always try to put as much pressure on as you can okay so we're reading 11 and three quarter so I'm just going to make this easy on myself make 11 and a half and actually this cut this corner is a little bit round so I'm gonna make it like 11 and 3 8 so we're not cutting much off of that we're only cutting 5 8 off of this so remember again you want to leave at least 1 8 of an inch between the tile and the wall for expansion and contraction I should have paid attention to this one but you can see to get this level I have a huge gap at the bottom here so I have to scribe cut this section where these two stones are. I'm just gonna get my pencil out. And I'm just gonna try cut this whole thing so that I can sit down a little bit further. We're using our angle grinder and a diamond blade to make this tapered cut. You can do this outside as well and make sure you wear a respirator to protect your lungs. So that it gets me a lot nicer against this stone. So this guy we're gonna to wanna to go up into the niche I'm going to be using a Schluter edge that goes on the edge of this. A lot of times I recommend going, having this L notch going over top of this tile uh, just for aesthetics because the grout joint will be this way rather than on the flat portion. But really, this is an exterior wall. It's insulated, but it is an exterior wall and, and it is recommended to use a silicone sealant in all the corners. With this Schluter edging, coming up against the wall, I would recommend just cutting this into the niche first and then we'll put this piece in with the, the corner against it because it's really difficult to try to scribe cut around a piece of Schluter edge like that. You're going to want to have it butt into this tile and not 
be cutting around it. If you don't have a wet saw like this one, you could use an angle grinder to make this little notched cut. You would need a good angle grinder, something that has high RPMs, and also a really good diamond blade to make this type of a cut. But it's possible to do it without a wet saw. So you can see how I have all these corners on here and that little bit of buildup, that's kind of why I kind of also like to back trial my tile because this little bump out of the Schluter band can be a little problematic. And since I'm using, I'm trialing both sides, I'm trialing the wall and trialing the tile, I have a little bit of more flexibility and room um, because we're using more thin set so that this doesn't become an issue because this is definitely bumped out of the wall a little bit here. You'll notice here how Steve used his finger to wipe off that excess thin set. Again, keep that in mind whenever you're using clips or not using clips because that'll help prevent the thin set from oozing out into the grout joints. So here we're compressing the tile, ensuring that it's bonded well to the wall. And then we're just adding our wedges and then we're gonna cinch down on those with the pliers. Keep in mind that the T-lock system, not only does it keep the grout joints nice and even because the clips have the spacers in them, but whenever you're compressing the tile, uh, you're getting a better bond too. This is 28, so 14. Yeah, that's actually fits right behind it. That's cool. So we can do that. We can do this whole shelf later. We're sizing up the tile that's going to go above the last one. Again, we're making a little cutout. We're going to have to make a cutout for it going into the shower niche. So again, if you don't have a wet saw, you could definitely do this cut with an angle grinder and diamond blade you just need a steady hand and keep in consideration that you don't want to nick the top of the tile now if you do use a wet saw you want to wipe off the back of it and make sure it's dry before back troweling or back buttering the tile that way the thin set will bond to it set the tile in the thin set mortar compress it clean the joints with your brush or your sponge but a little cheap paintbrush does come in handy for these 16th inch grout joints. It fits in there nicely, cleans out the thin set, and really eliminates cleanup the next day. So we're just compressing the tile again using our T-lock, keeping our joints nice and tight. And then as you'll see here, Steve gets a measurement. Make sure you measure off the T-lock clip to the ceiling. So the clip, again, is going to add your grout joint, and that's why you want to me measure off of that. So you can use the skinny side of the trowel to add your thin set mortar, and then cut your tile to size for that corner piece. It's really important to get the measurement just right so you're not fiddling with that tile. So this is going to be the tile section that's up against the shower bench, and Steve is going to give you some really great tips here on how to do that. So what we're going to do here on this corner bench is... I'm going to just have a Schluter edge at the top, but I really didn't want to do a, a metal edging towards the, towards the side wall here. So basically all I'm going to do is, is I'm going to run my tile right to that corner and then I'll be basically slicing this on a 45, back cutting this tile so that it meets, meets up to, that, to the other tile. So this will make more sense when we go to do the bench, but basically right now all I want to do is get this into the corner. Seven and a quarter inches, I'm going to make it seven and an eighth. Give myself a little room there. So then I'm gonna bring this towel in here. And honestly, that doesn't even look bad. I might not have to back cut this. This might, because I'm gonna be siliconing this corner. Like all corners, you wanna have a caulking joint. So as long as I could keep that joint nice and straight, I won't have to do a Schluter edge on it. And the main reason I don't really wanna do a Schluter edge is because I don't wanna have a, I guess basically I'd rather have this Schluter edge cut out of 45 meeting up against this tile rather than picture framing it across. Notice how Steve is going to compress this wedge and then move it over with that little knife. That knife comes in handy. It's a carpet knife and also clean out any of the thin set that oozes out between the tile and the shower pan tile. Notch this over the bench. So 10 and a quarter and then I'll be getting my corner piece to butt up against that. And main reason is, is so that my Schluter edge has a nice cut against uh, the wall tile here. I'm just going to be easier all the way around to do this top portion after the wall tile was in. So we're transferring the measurements onto the tile from the wall. Take your time doing this because that way you don't have to make successive cuts, which are always frustrating. But having a wet saw will help out with this type of cut if you've got a shower bench. 
and just run up to the tile. If if you overcut it, you're going to have to cut it again because you don't want to live with that mistake. So keep that in mind as well whenever you're making these accurate cuts. So again, all these corner flashing ends up building up your corners here. So back trialing your tile on this is going to make it a lot easier. Notice how the thin set is covering all of the curdy. You can't even see the curdy on the wall and the back of the tile. This is what good back traveling and traveling on the wall looks like. And it, it provides a tremendous bond between the tile and the curdy. So clean off any of the thin set that does use out though. The wedges are facing the left or the other tile in this example because that was the first column that we set. So we want that grout joint to be nice and tight. And then we're adding a 1 16th inch shim between that first tile and the shower bench because as you're stacking these tiles you're compressing all of them you're adding more weight and you want there to be an expansion and contraction joint between that tile and the shower bench so again we're just going up the wall here we're maintaining the one third pattern we're maintaining the 1 16th and 1 8th inch gap between the top of the tile and the ceiling so that's what we're doing to ensure that we're complying with TCNA guidelines. And this last tile looks good. We're gonna move on to the next column. Okay, so we just set our laser up since we're going over the bench. This is our third row over. So we just lined it up with the laser. Kind of makes it easy. And if it doesn't line up, we can just add some um, horseshoe shims to, to bring it up to speed, which looks like we're gonna to have to do. So there we go. As you can see here, we're using the sponge and the little linoleum knife to clean out the grout joints and ensure that they're clean. We're also removing any excess thin set that's between the tile and the wall. Maintain that 1 8 inch gap between this last column of tile and the, and the adjacent curdy wall. Again, that's really important for expansion and contraction of the wall, especially if the shower's on an outside wall like it is in this example. So we're maintaining the one third pattern as we go up the wall, compressing the tile, and then we're placing the last piece right here. It's always <laughs> an awesome feeling whenever you get to the last piece on the wall. So there you go, that's the first wall. The rest of the video is showing how to tile the shower are over on Bathroom Repair Tutor. We show you step by step how to tile all three walls, the corner shower bench, and the shower niche in addition to the pebble stone shower floor plus we've got written tutorials with all of our supply lists right there for you so you can check out that online course right here also put a link to it down in the description if you have any questions let us know we'd be happy to help you out and thanks for watching this video we'll see you in the next one